Does an orthopedic condition or sports injury have you sidelined? Make your comeback with GW Hospital Sports Medicine. We offer services from neck to toe, including care for shoulders, hips, knees, ankles, and hands. Plus, we're the official health care partner of GW Athletics, the DC Furies, and the DC Revolution. Get back to doing the things you love. Learn more at gwhospital.com slash sportsmed or call 888-4-GW-DOCS. Physicians are not employees or agents of this hospital. This podcast of the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs is sponsored by AAA Heating and Air. Their premier HVAC company in the Midlands is growing. Are you a top HVAC technician? AAA Heating and Air is looking for dedicated applicants to fill their fast-growing service department with top-notch HVAC technicians. If you're the best, then they want you. If you're ready to stop working and start a career, you can earn up to 100000 plus a year at AAA Heating and Air. Quality candidates will have at least two years' experience and a good driving record. Benefits include top industry salaries, commission on service and unit sales, set call limits, company-provided take-home vehicle and gas card, company-provided cell phone and tablet, health, dental, and vision benefits, 401k retirement plan with company match and scaled PTO based on length of service. Contact Roy and Dana Finley at 803-677-1500 or check out their job postings on Facebook or ZipRecruiter. Triple A air when you need us. Triple A heating and air. It's the Geek Guy Central Takeover Hour, presented by Firehouse Subs, founded by Firemen with Chris Clark. The 2007 South Carolina class was at that time, sixth in the country and fourth in the SEC, which is amazing. West Mitchell. You know, I think if you're South Carolina, you're you're aiming to, to at least be at 50%. Then in theory, you're adding talent, you're getting better, you're putting yourself in a position to compete. And Tyler Head. It's been a great week for South Carolina. On the recruiting front, still certainly plenty to talk about. On the home of the Gamecocks. 107.5 The Game. And welcome into the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs here on 1075 Game. Tyler Head and Wes Mitchell along with you in the Herndon Chevrolet Studios inching closer and closer to the Super Regional between the Gamecocks and the Gators coming up as we learned yesterday. First game going to be uh, Friday night at 6 o'clock. Uh, first pitch can be heard right here on 1075 the Game with pregame coverage starting at 545. Second game on Saturday. 3 o'clock pregame coverage at 2.45, and then hopefully won't need a third game on Sunday, and the Gamecocks can just handle their business in those first two games. Uh, but uh, as I talked with Colin Taylor a little bit earlier on this morning, you'll be shocked to know that it looks like it's going to rain down in the state of Florida this weekend, so hopefully we can avoid some uh, weather delays down there. you got to be kidding me. I know, right? Shocking. I know, man. Ho- hopefully if it does get delayed, it's for actual rain, not like the Braves uh, delay yesterday. It was... First pitch, 9 o'clock, and I don't know if it actually rained at all at it, the stadium. It didn't look like it, um, and I, I just love, which I love, watching that game last night, what they've had to do now with when they go to rain delay coverage and they watch like and they show like an old game or like pieces of an old game, or now they have it in a smaller box. They have weather delay at the top of the screen, then like a live feed of the tarp on the field at the bottom, because you just know People tune in thinking they're going to watch the Braves game, see an old game, thinking that's what they're watching in the moment, and then react to that as if it's ap- actually happening. So I, they've had to go to that length of like saying, hey, this is not the game that is live. This is a previous game. We're waiting on the right game to start. Well, they don't want um, people's grandmas calling the station asking what's going on, I guess. But luckily, I, I think if this one gets delayed, ESPN2 will have plenty of other action going around you know, other super regional action where they can probably tune in and, and let us watch that. But hopefully, let's all cross our fingers. You know how the weather is. You, yeah. you really can't predict it this far out. Um, you know, it can shift quite a bit. Yep. The, the Really, the, the one thing you don't want, obviously, is for it to affect kind of that that second, third, fourth inning part of a game where where your starters are just kind of getting going and just getting loose. Sure. And then you have this huge delay, and it ends up actually affecting the outcome of the game. You can deal with the delay that uh, pushes back the start of a game. And I, I think, to be honest, you know, that's what the Braves were trying to avoid yesterday. Yeah. It, it looks bad when you delay a game and there's no actual rain. But I, I think their hearts are in the right place with that. And, you know, I think even if it's a middle of the game, fifth, sixth inning, you know, it's not a big deal. But you really hate when the starters kind of get their actual start kind of taken apart there. And 
hopefully the fans will uh, you know be rewarded by this thing kind of avoiding us. But I, I'm as we get closer, Tyler. I'm I'm excited, man. Um, so not all the different websites and media sort of entities out there really cover college baseball the way you see here at South Carolina. Like sure. I, I think. Um, you know, all the respect in the world, actually not only to like Colin with Gamecock Central, but there's a lot of good local media coverage of the South Carolina baseball team. You start to look around, not everywhere has that. And my my point being, the Florida sites actually do a really good job of covering Florida baseball as well. So one thing I'm excited about, and I'm I'm actually trying to get a guest uh, here on our show on uh, the Takeover Hour, but already on Gamecock Central, Colin has a story up that features some insight from uh, Nick De La Torre, who's with Gators Online. So they really dive into baseball there. So this will really allow all of us to kind of treat this like a football weekend where, you know, you're getting insight from yep. your opponents, reporters, you're getting actual analysis as opposed to surface level stuff. So uh, very, mm-hmm. very excited about it. And the early reports from Nick here, as we're all kind of learning about this Florida team, maybe other people already knew, but I'm kind of learning as we go. Florida offense, I mean, these are some mashers. Yep. Very, uh, as Nick called it, very new school approach. They don't really care about hitting singles. You're not going to see them bunting. You're not going to see um, station to station. You're going to see get on base and then try to try to hit the three run bomb. And uh, so it'll be important for Carolina, obviously, to keep the ball down and and keep them at bay but as we've seen as we've seen with South Carolina as well teams like this it it can either be explosive and unrelenting or sometimes uh you know you hit a couple of long flies that don't quite go out and sure. sometimes you can have uh, uh excellent results on the other side and, and you know we've talked about this a little bit already this week when you go back to when these two teams played at the end of April and South Carolina gained the sweep in that series and then kind of trending downward since then Florida's gone in the other direction they've been 17 and 5 since then and obviously performed very well at the SEC tournament performed well uh, of course making it out of the regional this past weekend and uh you know but both these teams as I kind of talked about a little bit yesterday in very similar situations of being two teams that have not made it this far in the postseason in a handful of years and uh, one of them's obviously going to punch their ticket to the Omaha this weekend you know a place where both fan bases expect that team to be on a pretty regular basis and now here they are they got to go through each other to get that opportunity yeah, and I, I said it yesterday. I had no idea Florida had not gone to a Super Regional since 2018 either. That's yep. the same case as South Carolina. It, it really feels like it should be, you know, more recent than that. Uh, I didn't realize it had been that long. It felt like they've kind of just been rolling along. But th- that's a long time for that program and sort of what the expectations were for them, you know, with Sully being the coach and kind of what they did getting to Omaha so many years and then, of course, winning it. I, I I was shocked by that. So there there's some built up. I don't think it's necessarily frustration from the Florida fan base like it maybe was for South Carolina's fan base last year. But there is some some built up kind of missing uh, piece here for both of these fan bases and having not been certainly not to a super regional, but even further than that, not having been to Omaha in a while. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, before we uh, you know move on to some recruiting talk, speaking of Florida baseball and talking about the Braves. What was your reaction to uh, Pete Alonzo last night? Oh, man. Okay, I, I got to be honest. Uh, like, when stuff like that happens, so for those who didn't see it, um, Pete Alonzo, who is not one of my favorite players. Not at all. Yeah, he hits, he hits a bomb. A former Florida Gator, so it ties in. Yeah, hits a bomb on Bryce Elder, and then is seen just yelling from the dugout, throw, throw it again, throw it again. And you know what? I, I know some Braves fans are like PO'd about this. I I, I kind of think it's all funny, but I, I enjoy I enjoy the back and forth. Like I enjoy, okay, sure. he's now opened this door for the Braves to chirp back. Yes. And of course, Tyler Matzik is one of the first to get caught, uh, at least on camera, chirping back. And the fact that the Mets had one hit, I believe it was a single, after that comment and the Braves came back it is all too perfect for me I, I don't know if that really is what sparked the rally or if that's just what happened right but 
I, I love it. I'm all for there being some chippiness. I'm not a guy, especially anymore, sort of being on the media side of things, even though I obviously don't cover the Braves. Sure. I pull for them, but I kind of, I don't get like in my feels about, oh, this guy's yelling at my pitcher, but I think it's absolutely when, awesome. When it that, comes back to bite them in the butt, oh, it's, it's, so, it's just so great. So amazing. That's one of the best, it's one of the best feelings in sports when your team, when the, the other team is sort of the bad guy right. in this scenario, and then you put them in their place. Uh, fantastic. Now, the Braves the Braves have chirped back a little bit. Mm-hmm. Their tweet about the game yesterday, I believe, said throw it again. So now you have to win the series, Tyler. Yeah, you do. And look, the, the, Braves, one game. the, the Braves and the Mets have always been a it's very chippy rivalry. But, you know, go back to what happened last year with the Mets, you know, falling apart down the stretch and the Braves win the NL East once again. This rivalry is taken on, you know, even another step in these past couple of years, and anytime time they get together, it's going to be, you know, a little bit chippy, and uh, this series is already starting off that way. Well, I think there's some, there's some pent-up frustration from the Mets side, because the Braves are just a better team. Yeah. Like, I, I, I think if they played a hundred times, you know, the Braves would win I don't know, 70 games. Like, they're, they're just the better team, and, and I think when you're a team that's kind of been built to win right now and all this money has been spent you're in that locker room you're in that clubhouse you know that this team was built to win yeah and hey it's the believe the highest payroll like ever and there's this just one hill you can't quite climb and of course you're in the position to do it last year and didn't even really fall apart just the Braves played better. They played better, and then they they did it right down to the very end. Um, you know, even tied in your overall record, but that one win for the Braves was the difference. I uh, I don't know, man. I mean, I'm sure it's very frustrating. Sure. I just I don't know. I there's something about Pete Alonso that irks you. I feel like unless you're the Florida thing's bad enough for me. Well, yeah, yeah. You're you got those Georgia roots I, too. I, I can't help it. Um, but Gamecock fans can relate to you on that, I sure. think, Tyler. So I I don't know, man, but there, there's just something weird about the way Alonzo carries himself that's a little bit awkward. And so I, I think it's always fun, again, to see that. I, I, I don't lose sleep about any of that. I see some people on Twitter that get very, very fired up about chirping and, you know, he's showing up the guy, stuff like that. But the the funny thing is, Bryce Elder is like the most chill, non-confrontational, most easygoing. Like, you're yelling at that guy? Yeah. Like, I could get if you and Acuna, like, get into it or something. like Sure. Or Azuna, like, one of the flashy guys. Yeah. You're yelling at this dude who who didn't even make the roster to start the year? It's a uh, little it, weird. And they tried to, you know... They tried to get a sound bite out of Elder after the game when they asked him about it. And he's he like, yeah, biting. if I hit it at the concourse, I'd say something, too. He said, uh, I'd holler, too, which yeah. was a <laughs> fantastic quote. But, yeah, um, but that certainly came Fun back. Fun moment. To, certainly came back to bite him. Um, uh, switching gears now really quick. Um, you know, we've been talking about all the recruiting visits going on here in the month of June. Had a lot of guys come into town this past weekend. For this upcoming weekend, uh, what June the 9th, it will be Friday. I uh, got a couple more names that have been added to the list of players that will be uh, coming to town this weekend. Yeah, we're, we're adding and we're subtracting as well. I uh, I did officially take Justin Green and Jarvis Boatwright off the list. I'm assuming they're not going to make it. They both committed to other schools this past week. So uh, unless I get word that, hey, they're still coming, we're going to assume that they're not but also added a couple of guys. There's, uh, I added two guys to the list yesterday. If you go to Gamecock Central, this is actually free stuff. You can hit the visits tab, and it, it's very cool. It'll show you by date which guys are scheduled to be at South Carolina. And so we added two new guys at D.D. Holmes, uh, Gonzaga High School in Washington, D.C. He's a four-star edge. Obviously, South Carolina needs to continue to add guys at that position. They want Dylan Stewart, obviously. Number one player in the country, according to On Three, his visit is June twenty third. But you can't count on that because it's going to be an all out battle. So Holmes, another guy they're targeting at that position, six six, two forty. He released a top six last month, and South Carolina, of course, made it. He wants to take visits to all six and um, then make his decision. So that's uh, 
Florida, Florida State, Maryland, Michigan, Rutgers, and the Gamecocks. Uh, that's who he named as the top six. And then, interestingly enough, a punter, Mason Love from Park Hill South, that's in Riverside, Missouri, one of the top punters in the country. He actually tweeted out, this was not necessarily on my radar, not that punter recruiting always is. He tweeted out a graphic that he will be officially visiting South Carolina as well. We don't do punter and kicker rankings on on three, but uh, Cole's Kicking is probably the premier punter kicker ranking service. They have their own camps. They dive way, way, way into the punter and kicker thing, and they actually have him as the number four punter in the country. So, you know, we'll see with South Carolina. Obviously, the the Kai Kroger era at South Carolina, you had to start to prepare for the future that he's not going to be at South Carolina forever. So if you're, you know, that staff, you're Pete Limbo, you got to start to consider what your options are moving forward. And, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes with this kid. But six foot, 170. He's also ranked the number 19 kicker in the 2024 class, but uh, is a little bit more highly regarded as a punter. Gotcha. A lot of things happening in the world of NIL to talk about this morning. And some news that came out a little bit earlier on this morning revolves around EA Sports' new college football video game set to come out in 2024. We'll talk about that next. You're listening to the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs on 107.5 The Game. It's the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour. 107.5 The Game. We tell you about it every single day. Firehouse Subs has a sub of the day every single day. You can get a medium for seven ninety nine, a small for five ninety nine. Wednesday is the New York Steamer. I got to tell you, I had never even had pastrami until about a month and a half ago, and the New York Steamer has gone has moved all the way up my personal firehouse subs power rankings. Currently holding the number one spot, New York Steamer has corned beef brisket, premium pastrami, melted provolone, mustard mayo. And here's what I think puts it over the top, Italian dressing on top as well. Again, $7.99 for a medium. Hit the firehousesubs.com uh, website or the Firehouse Subs app. Hit the Rapid Rescue. They'll make your sub. You can customize it. It'll be waiting for you on the shelf along with your chips. All you have to do is fill up your drink, head on along your way. Again, that's the Firehouse Subs app. Sub of the day, New York Steamer. Check them out today. Appreciate Firehouse Subs being our sponsor right here on the GC Takeover Hour. Will your favorite college football player be in the new 2024 EA Sports video game? Maybe not. We'll tell you why next on the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs. 107.5. You are getting sleepy. Your CPAP mask is clamped tightly to your face. You will not toss and turn through the whooshing. You will not throw the mask. It's not working, Harold. People who struggle with CPAP have partners who struggle too. Luckily, now there's Inspire. No mask, no hose, just sleep. When I snap my fingers, you will remember to visit InspireSleep.com. Inspire is not for everyone. Talk to your doctor to see if it's right for you and review important safety information at inspiresleep.com. It's the Cape Cod Central Takeover Hour. Presented by Firehouse Subs. Founded by Firemen with Chris Clark, Wes Mitchell, and Tyler Head. On your home of the Gamecocks. 107.5 The Game. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and welcome back in at the Gamecocks Central Takeover Hour. Presented by Firehouse Subs. Here at 107.5 The Game, Tyler Head and Wes Mitchell along with you on this Wednesday morning. And, you know, we had a great conversation with Jeremy Smith from the Garnet Trust yesterday. For the Garnet Trust Hour, if you missed any of that, it's up on our podcast page, 107.5thegame.com. And towards the end of the hour, we did touch a little bit on the upcoming EA Sports College Football video game making its return in 2024 and the conversation around players that might want to opt out uh, of the game, feeling that they are not getting compensated well enough. Uh, we know the the projected number, what they might make uh, as a flat fee for everyone is about $500. Um, story coming out earlier this morning from uh, Pete Nakos on On3. Uh, the College Football Players Association organizing a boycott of the 2024 EA Sports video game. And, uh, you know, I've, I've been in here uh, doing these shows for the past couple of hours. I've only been able to really kind of skim over this a little bit. But the, the main point I see from it is that Justin Falcinelli, I believe I'm pronouncing that right, 
who is the uh, president, former Clemson, player. former Clemson player, the vice president of the College Football Players Association, uh, is essentially saying that these players are not getting compensated well enough if that is the number at $500, and he's pushing for them to get paid more and is now pushing these players to opt out of the game instead. Yeah, so first of all, um, my, my first thought on all this, Tyler, was, all right, College Football Players Association. Yep. W- what is that? Sure. Like, do they have any power in this situation? Do you know it, it? It sounds like a very, very pretty name. Yes. And like it should have some power. Like it's a powerful organization. However, uh, I don't know how much pull the College Football Players Association actually has among the players yet. I, I know this is kind of an ongoing thing where I think they're trying to establish themselves. From what I understand. And, you know, I, I get it. I, I think any time you have something new, there's going to be potentially some pushback about what that fair number is. And, you know, if there's some negotiation with anything, you know, it's, it's kind of like the office episode, like you, you, you never you never accept the first offer. So go sure. ahead and give me the second offer. Sure. But in, in this case, you know, $500 per player, it has also been reported, and again, five hundred dollars is kind of an estimate based on the information that is out there. Maybe it's a little bit less, maybe it's a little bit more. Sportico, and I think this is maybe the important another important element, has reported there's gonna be no royalties. So you are signing away your NIL to the game for a set fee. Yes. So then if this thing makes if this thing becomes the best selling game of all time, you get no more money. Yes. And so, you know, w- will there be a case here at some point where it's, okay, here's a set fee plus every player gets 0.001% of revenues or something like that. I could see players potentially pushing for that a- at some point and trying to hold out. However, if, if, every, if there's... If everybody holds out, the whole thing kind of falls in on itself. And would you rather have $500 per player or have nothing? And and the thing is here, if let's say every single player in the entire country decided they were going to hold out, not be a part of this, and they said $500 is not enough for us to be in the video game, EA is still going to make the game. They'll just make it with completely generic rosters that, as we've talked about, Fans are just going to go in and put these players in individually as they've been doing with NCAA 14 for the past decade. Yeah, and see, I am I am wondering, is there a chance that this game does not have rosters that can be edited because of the pushback it's potential from the original O'Bannon case? Right. And so I, I can I definitely think there's no way this game ships with if a guy does not opt in. Caleb Williams, number 13, USC, with the same exact rating and same home state. And I think those days are over. Now, sure. could it be that it's completely generic, random players, and then you could go in and edit them? Yeah. Maybe that's still on the table. But I could see there potentially being a little bit of pushback on that. Here's the thing. If you're going to have any type of group licensing, which that is what this is, then the most valuable player on the roster is never so the, the most highly marketable player let's say Spencer Rattler he's never going to in a group licensing deal he's never going to make as much as he's quote unquote worth what his image is worth in a group licensing situation but the 85th guy on the roster is going to make more than he is worth as far as a marketability standpoint goes. So there's always going to be a little bit of give and take Sure. in that if you're one of the most marketable guys, you're looking out for the other guys in your locker room. Yeah. So I, I think there there has to be a little bit of just kind of social locker room push to, hey guys, let's support this for the betterment of everyone. I was thinking yesterday when we really sort of started to dive into this, all right, for let's say conservatively, for 95% of the college football players out there, $500 and a free game 
mm-hmm. is probably completely fair. Sure. If you are EA, if you are, um, what is it, one team partners, which is facilitating this whole thing for EA, you don't want to sort of establish that precedent of, oh, well, that guy's holding out, that guy's holding out, that guy's holding out. It has to remain equal. Sure. However, here's what I think your options could be. Everybody gets $500 plus a free game, if that's what's agreed upon, for their likeness. However, you can take, let's say, the top 10 most marketable players. You can sign them to a separate deal yeah. in order to promote the game. So that could be, A, your cover player gets a little bit more because they're going to be on the cover of the game. And then these other guys are going to be paid to be in commercials, to promote the game on their social media, to, uh, I mean, maybe maybe they promote the game at events. Maybe they do live streams. There are certain things, if you're EA, that you could do to all within yeah. the legal rights of everything that's set up and without saying, oh, we're paying them more to be in the game. Right. If, if Caleb Williams is the best player that comes back, then, uh, which this game won't be here till next year right you know so i don't know who that would even be the most marketable player in the country you can say hey man we're also signing you to a promotional deal but you got to agree to this you got to agree to be you got to be in the game for us to want to do a promotional deal with you but we're going to give you twenty thousand dollars to to promote the game so you're not changing the actual end game agreement but you're paying them extra to be involved with the promotion of the game i think that's the I think that's the route you take if you're EA. The real key, though, is that you set the original number at a good enough place right. that you can be, you can make money off the game on your end, but that on the other end, 95% of college football players are going to say, uh, yeah, no-brainer for me. Yeah, and again, like we've talked about, there are gonna, certainly going to be some guys that opt out. Um, I don't think it's going to be a thing in mass. And as you mentioned, the College Football Players Association, while it's a great name, I don't know how much weight they have, at least in the conversation as of right now. It, it does. I, I tried to do some quick reading on them. And um, the, the first line in this, in, in this uh, article about them, or the second line says, the organization tried to establish its first chapter at Penn State last summer. Yeah. So tried to establish its first chapter. Sounds to me like... Doesn't tell me they were successful. Yes. And, uh, and, and Pete, by the way, with On3, um, slightly biased here, but he has done a phenomenal job of covering the NIL aspects in the college football landscape. I, I think is one of the top voices in that space as far as the media coverage of it goes. So it, he, he's done a really good job of kind of hitting on all facets of this thing. But it, it is going to be, it's going to be fascinating, man, how, Absolutely. how, how this all plays out. I, I wonder, I mean, I've already decided the next football players that we have for every Garnet Trust interview, I feel like that's now a question. Hey, are you going to opt in yeah, if it's absolutely. 500 bucks? So I, absolutely. I wonder if this is going to be like reported on in press conferences, like, once, because here's the thing, we don't know. I imagine it's going to be breaking news. Yeah. Whenever players are actually officially given an offer, and it's going to be leaked pretty quickly. Sure. Hey, we got offered five hundred dollars in a free game, five hundred and seventy dollars right. in a free game. And it's going to leak out, and we're going to very quickly find out how the just how most players, how the majority feel about that. Absolutely. Uh, Keeping on the topic of NIL, the state of Texas doing something a little bit different that we haven't seen attempted yet in the NIL space. We'll talk about that next on the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs on 107.5 The Game. It's the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour. 107.5 The Game. Hey guys, our friends at Gold Line Framing would like to invite you out to their special Wind Down Wednesday event today, June 7th. That's 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Now, I'm looking at this graphic right now. It has a wine glass on it and some refreshments. So I'm guessing you're going to be served uh, maybe a little chance to, to take the edge off, maybe a chance to buy some excellent custom framing from our friends at Gold Line Framing. Uh, they'll be offering an extra 20% off all custom framing orders placed today and any gallery purchases that are made during the special event as well. Again, that's an extra 20% off 
all custom framing orders and gallery purchases. That's, of course, at 511 12th Street, West Columbia. Uh, our friend Kendall Walsh at Gold Line Framing had us out at uh, the store, I guess that was about three weeks ago. So why don't you head on over there as well? They've been in business for over 20 years, right across the street from Zesto. They're open Tuesday to Friday, 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., and then Saturday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., from diplomas to original artwork to canvases, jerseys, and flags. They can help with all your custom framing needs. But again, today, it is Wind Down Wednesday, June 7th, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Head on over to Gold Line Framing, 511 12th Street, West Columbia. Everything's bigger in Texas, including their attempts at NIL. Talk about that next on 107.5. Are adventure and relaxation on your mind? Jump in the car and head to Fauquier County, Virginia this weekend. Just a short drive from D.C. off I-66 and nestled in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. Fauquier County has it all, including picturesque hiking trails, Rappahannock River access, plus over 25 wineries, breweries, and cideries. Visit the many unique shops and farm-to-table restaurants of Fauquier County's towns and villages, or take in the many historical attractions suitable for all ages. Check out visitfauquiercounty.com. That's visit, F-A-U-Q-U-I-E-R dot com. Fuck here, County. Find what you love. Okay. It's the Cape Cod Central Takeover Hour. Presented by Firehouse Subs. Founded by Firemen. With Chris Clark, Wes Mitchell, and Tyler Head. On your home of the Gamecocks. 107.5 The Game. And welcome back into the Gamecocks Central Takeover Hour. Presented by Firehouse Subs. Here on 107.5 The Game, Tyler Head and Wes Mitchell along with you. A lot happening in the world of NIL uh, right now. Uh, you know, uh, Plenty to talk about. Uh, Mention what's going on in the state of Texas. The Lone Star NIL, which is uh, being run by former Southland Conference Commissioner Tom Burnett and his consulting agency, Southwest Sports Partners, uh, with the goal to drive enrollment and retention at Texas universities. This is a first of its kind in the NIL era to not really have a focus on one school as we see most like Garnet Trust focuses on South Carolina obviously as well as other collectives around the country. This one going to encompass all the universities within the state. I'm I'm not sure about this. Uh, I see, I believe I see the use case. Like I believe I see the purpose. However, you know, Texas, first of all, is such a big state. There's already tons of collectives in the state of Texas and reading uh, again from Pete Nakos, they're pretty successful collectives there already. So you've kind of got first mover advantage for a lot of these collectives. Why, if I'm a business, would I support this collective as opposed to one of the other ones? I, I think is the big question here. If I'm trying to get, let's say random Gamecock fan A to uh, to sort of contribute to a collective, they're contributing not for return on investment, but they're contributing so that the team they pull for, the team that they, in a lot of cases, the school that they attended or the school that they grew up pulling for and wearing jerseys of their entire life, their return on investment is I'm helping South Carolina to win. Yes. So if I'm random let's say texas a&m fan a i'm giving to the 12th man fund as opposed to this now i i do think there could be a little bit of a use case and let's say i'm um texas uh texas wing house which i don't know if that exists or not but i'm texas wing house and i've got wing based sports bars all around the state of Texas. And you see this at restaurants, even here in Columbia, you see, see this at restaurants throughout the state of South Carolina. They got their Gamecock logo on the wall. They got their Clemson Tiger logo on the wall. They may have their Coastal Carolina logo on the wall. Um, if it's near the border, they may even have a Georgia logo on the wall. Sure. So, they're trying to, to walk the line, right? They're trying not to tick off South Carolina fans, not to tick off Clemson fans. They're trying to invite them all to come eat their wings. So I could see a case where if I was a business and I was looking for an actual return on investment and I wanted to be able to partner kind of with everybody, I could see this being the direction I went. Now, is it going to pull enough money to be what it wants to be? Is it going to pull in enough money to be self-sustaining? That 
that I I do not know. Yeah. Um, and, and I would really, I would sort of question what what is the goal here? You know, like the the goal ultimately for for collectives. Well, this to be honest is to help their universities. Right. And he puts this part at the end. The hope is to drive enrollment and retention at Texas universities. I and mean, he makes it sound like recruits don't want to go to Texas and people are transferring out left and right. And yeah, I know you can look at Texas A&M that lost, I believe, 31 players this past year, but they also had players that transferred in. They're still doing fine in the recruiting rankings. Like, I'm not sure where this part's coming from that, like, nobody wants to play football in Texas all of a sudden. Yeah, no, I don't think that's a thing either. So it, it, it is it is curious. It is interesting. But hey, may, maybe they'll be on to something. I don't know. Maybe we'll see. If it works, I promise you, we'll see these things pop up in other states. And, uh, you know, we'll, I could, again, I could see some businesses that would want to support this. However, even most business owners, man, if you're, let, let's, again, put this in the context of South Carolina. Most business owners actually have a rooting interest in one of the two major schools. If, if you're in this state, if you're in the southeast College football runs so deep and college athletics runs so deep. If I'm a business owner and I went to Clemson, I don't know even if it's sort of this, hey, we're going to support everybody mindset. Right. I don't know if I want to support the South Carolina guys. If I'm a South Carolina business owner, I don't know if I want to support the Clemson guys. So you maybe are cutting down on the number of actual businesses that have any use for this, I think. Right. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens again. The first of its kind <clears throat> to be attempted in this new era of uh, NIL, and we'll see if it comes to fruition. Uh, elsewhere in the world of uh, interesting things being announced that might happen or might not, a super prep league may be coming in 2024. We'll talk about it next on the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs on 107.5 The Game. It's the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour. 107.5, the game. All right, any parents out there like me, you know you would do absolutely anything for your kids, and that's why it's so important to protect them with life insurance from State Farm. State Farm agent Amy Mason Cup will help make it easy and affordable to help you protect your kids, your family, no matter what the future holds, because for the people you do anything for, life insurance could mean everything. Call State Farm agent Amy Mason Cup in the Midlands today, 803-772-5554. Let her help your family just like she helped mine. Amy's a South Carolina native and a local agent, and she and her team can give you a personalized quote on life insurance to protect your kids, protect your family, help meet your needs, and help you save. Again, a local agent, Amy Mason Cup, State Farm. Her office is right off of I-26, 612 St. Andrews Road, Suite 4 in Columbia. You can visit her website for more information, amymasoncup.com. Again, that's State Farm agent Amy Mason Cup. Life insurance to protect your kids and your family, 803-772-5554, amymasoncup.com. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is... It's the Cape Cod Central Takeover Presented by Firehouse Subs. Founded by Firemen with Chris Clark, Wes Mitchell, and Tyler Head. On your home of the Gamecocks. 107.5 The Game. And welcome back into the Gamecocks Central Takeover Hour. Presented by Firehouse Subs. Here on 107.5 The Game. Tyler Head and Wes Mitchell along with you for a few more minutes. We're handing things over to Jay and Terry for the halftime show. Been talking a lot about NIL and... Uh, Things coming about lately here uh, in regards to college football. Another proposal that's been put on the table, this by Brian Woods, the former president of the USFL who stepped down last year, is a high school football prep super league that he wants to start in 2024, uh, targeting about 12 different cities around the country. And the hope being that the best prospects uh, those being rising sophomores and juniors will want to take place or take part in this to garner more exposure from colleges. Do we have one of those sound effects that's like, Burr. uh, probably maybe for the future? But I that was my first thought, Tyler. I mean, I, <laughs> I I'm I'm struggling to see how this would all work like first of all it, it's hard enough to put together a team 
that can create a watchable product yes. uh, in terms of offensive and defensive scheme and the guys looking like they all know what they're doing. Anybody who's watched as many All-Star games as I have, if you watch the Under Armour game, if you watch the uh, you know what used to be the Army All-American game, Shrine Bowl, you know these guys have about four days of practices and they're trying to put it all together. And you know it, it can look ugly on a Saturday in the fall sure. with colleges. You know these are college players and they go through spring practice. They have all this summer extra stuff they're able to do plus a full month of preseason practice, and it can still look ugly. To me, th- that's the first issue: is that how are you going to put together a product in the limited practice time that these players are all going to have together? Second of all, the point I bring that up. The reason I bring that up point is that if you're not going to have a good product, how are you going to fund this? Because I don't see a why people are going to want to attend it in person. If I if I'm in, these are all in what major cities? Yeah, so places like Atlanta, L.A., San Diego, Phoenix, and, and the caveat to this is you have to live within a certain area of these cities. So, and I brought up this example earlier, we were talking about Elijah Griffin for the class of 2025. He plays in Savannah, Georgia. Mm -hmm. He could not join any of these teams because he does not live in the vicinity. So you, uh, and I get it, they're going towards these certain cities because again, in these major, highly populated areas, you have a better opportunity of pulling more talent. That doesn't mean that's where all the four and five star guys are living. Yeah, no, it doesn't. And... So, I'll be honest, Tyler, I haven't read deep into this because it's so far fetched to actually be successful, in my opinion, but have they said exactly when this would be? Like, It looks like they're shooting for next year, so they have a target start date of April the 19th, 2024, with an end date of May the 24th, so taking place over the course of six weeks, and I don't know if there would be like a championship or a playoff, or it's just literally six weeks of football for the sake of exposure, but but one thing that he touched on that I, and I want to get your insight on this, it, it, he's almost making it sound like going to seven on sevens and, and going to camps and stuff, it's not good enough. Like, this is what you need to truly get proper exposure, and you're, you and Chris and plenty of others with On3 are out there at these camps week in and week out um, throughout the entire year, you get plenty of exposure, and you also get relationships built with coaches at these things that there's no guarantee you would get that with this prep Super League. So this is a replacement for 7-on-7, basically? The way that he's making it sound, yes. I mean, I I think part part of my issue is, um, do you have time? Like, I mean, you're you're in school at this point. So, I mean, I, I guess you have football practice after after class anyway, the way things are structured right now, and there is spring football practice, but I I don't know. It seems like a huge time commitment, and I I do think a lot of these states already have rules in place. They're going to keep you from how how do you do this without losing your eligibility for high school? And that's the thing. He goes on to state it's going to be played with NCAA football rules and will operate independent of high school athletic associations therefore giving players the chance to profit off name, image, and likeness. But he did not give any explanation on to how they're going to operate outside of these high school athletic associations. And like you said, sure, you can go play in this league, but when you go play your junior year in high school, they're going to say, yeah, you're not eligible anymore. Sorry, bud. Well, I promise you there's going to be a push for some of those leagues to say that because we, I mean, the some of the overreach by these leagues already um, – it's kind of over the top. So I, I I don't see this being able to get off the ground personally, but hey, if it does, may, maybe this is the maybe this is the next big thing. Maybe this is what replaces camps. Um, but I, I'm I'm with you, man. I don't know that it includes enough of the top players right. in order for it to work. And um, now are there enough good players around the Atlanta area to put together Probably a pretty good football team. Uh, I'm sure. Sure. But also, and, and I know I know you can get hurt. You can get hurt walking down the street. But what happens when somebody gets hurt playing in, in this league and then misses their entire next high school football season? And, and I know, I get it. You can get hurt playing 7-on-7. Seven seven. You can get hurt playing other sports. You can always get hurt. Right. But, um you know, what, what happens if you get severely hurt 
doing this and it affects what you're actually there to do, which I would think is to play ball with your high school name on the front. Yeah, I don't get it. Um, be interesting to see what happens. Uh, this strikes me as one of those things that's either going to disappear and we're never going to hear from it again, or it does come to fruition and just ends up being a total flop. Yeah, or, hey, it's a new idea. Give them credit. They're trying something new. Maybe this sort of becomes the next big thing as far as, um, you know, high school all-star games. It's, a, it's much more of a commitment than that. But I, I think... I think if you started, if you found a way to be able to pull from a little bit bigger um, geographical footprint, maybe. Hey, I, again, I'm not trying to completely knock it because I, I give them credit for trying something new, for thinking outside the box. I just don't know. I don't know financially. I don't know if this math will math. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, something, to, <clears throat> something to keep an eye on, but that's just what we know as of right now and Sure, more details will come out later, but I don't have I don't have a lot of confidence uh, in it, at least for what we've heard so far. That'll do it for today's edition of the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour, presented by Firehouse Subs. Coming up next, halftime show with Jay and Terry on 107.5 The Game. Does an orthopedic condition or sports injury have you sidelined? Make your comeback with GW Hospital Sports Medicine. We offer services from neck to toe, including care for shoulders, hips, knees, ankles, and hands. Plus, we're the official health care partner of GW Athletics, the DC Furies, and the DC Revolution. Get back to doing the things you love. Learn more at gwhospital.com slash sportsmed or call 888-4-GW-DOCS. Physicians are not employees or agents of this hospital.